Hey everyone, it's Haley, and today I'm going to be talking about some really fast and quick reads that can help you get to your Goodreads goal, or if you're just needing something kind of fast to read. So I've been trying to get to my Goodreads goal this year. I had the goal set for initially 100 books, but life got in the way. It has been such a busy year that I had to lower it down to 75, and I'm like so close to 75. So close I can taste it. It tastes like success. Editing me just popping in here to say that, yeah, I ended up like blowing the 75 goal out of the water. It's November 23rd, actually the day that this video is going up. I'm just like finishing up editing it, but I have now read 88 books. I'm about to finish an 89th and I don't have very many days left for my reading year, but I really kind of want to try and like squeeze in some graphic novels and stuff to get to 100. But yeah, just wanted to update you with that. And that's my point. Like, I don't want people to feel too pressured to try and get to your Goodreads goal. I just like doing it as a competition with myself. I like challenging myself and having that little challenge for myself, but make sure that it's something you're doing like because you enjoy it and because you want to be reading more and that is giving you like the extra edge and the extra push that you need to do so. Don't be doing it because you feel pressured to. But whether you're looking for some like short and quick reads, which is what I'm doing to try and get myself closer to that goal, or you are looking to just like find something quick to read, maybe you don't have the attention span, maybe you've been in a reading slump and you're needing a quick read to get you out of it, whatever the case may be, this is the video for you. I have my tried and true, like really quick reads. So there are some books that I have read in like a day, but I wouldn't necessarily say they were quick reads. I know that realistically it's just cause like I was sitting there for like four hours reading or listening to the audiobook or whatever, or longer than that. And because of that, I ended up reading it so quickly. So I will say that I did like pick ones that actually were super, super quick. But if you're looking to kind of enhance your reading and read more books. Audiobooks are a great way to do that. This would be a great time to go into like an Audible sponsorship, but I don't have one. It would be nice if I did. I do have a link down below if you wanted to check them out though. That is an affiliate link and I would appreciate if you use it. But I was just saying that because it seemed like I was segueing into a sponsorship or something. But what I would say is like, if you're unsure about audiobooks, like they've been saving my butt this year. And I think that they can help so many people. It's not for everyone. Like I understand some people might have trouble paying attention to it, but but for me, I just had to kind of like figure out what I can and can't do where I can pay attention to something else and like be able to actually absorb the book. So for me, I love coloring in my coloring book app, which once again, not sponsored, but I really love my coloring book app. So that is a lot of fun. And that's one of my favorite things to do or just like browse on Pinterest and do like silly things that don't really take any brain power. So that being said, that was a long enough intro. I'm sorry. I just wanted to preface things and kind of try to help you guys out, but let's get into the books. So there are actually a couple of like really obvious routes that you can take if you're looking for a quick read. And I'm going to go over those first and my recommendations for those. So the first of those is graphic novels. And I actually have three to recommend to, to you guys today, but there are so many out there. I'm sure that you can find something that you enjoy. The first one, I don't actually own a car. Actually, I have four. So the first First two I don't actually own a copy of. So Heartstopper by Alice Oswin, so good. I still haven't actually watched the adaptation, which is nuts. I definitely need to get to that, especially before Bookmas, where I'm talking about adaptations from this past year. But like I said, really busy year. But Heartstopper, the graphic novels, they are so good, so lovely, and just so much fun. Like they tug on your heartstrings, but also are just such great cozy reads and definitely something you can fly through like all four or however many there are volumes super, super quickly, like in a day or an afternoon, easy. And the other one is Seance Tea Party. And I can't remember the author for this one, but this was such a fun and sweet little like Halloween-y sort of um, graphic novel. And I thought it was really cute. I loved the art style, was a huge fan of that one. Tea Dragon Ch Tapestry by Kate o 
O'Neill is also actually a really good one. But the two that I actually own here, so the first one is The Prince and the Dressmaker, and this is by Jen Wang. This is such, once again, I feel like graphic novels that are so sweet a lot of the time, except the next one I'm gonna show you. Actually, that made me think of another one. Oh my god. We are all over the place today. But this one is just such a sweet and cute one. It is set in 1800s in France, and it follows a prince who he just really likes to wear dresses, and it's following him in this dressmaker, and it just so cute. The reason that I said the next one isn't sweet is because I actually read it yesterday and it completely blew my mind, but that is The Handmaid's Tale graphic novel adaptation by Margaret Atwood. Graphic novel adaptations exist for a lot of classics and I personally really love them. Like I love experiencing story in a new way. I can't speak today. I don't know what's happening. I tried to say that sentence like 12 times, so we're just gonna stick with what we have. But I have actually never read the full novelization for The Handmaid's Tale, and I knew it was gonna take me a really long time to get to, so I was like, you know what, I'll just read this graphic novel because I want to watch the show, but I've been putting it off until I consumed some sort of Margaret Atwood for it. And oh my god, this was absolutely wild. I devoured it in the morning because it was just so haunting and kept me on the edge of my seat, and just like with shock because it's not even I don't know it's like quietly tense and like really loudly haunting but quietly tense if that makes sense like there's not really action but it feels like there's so much action because the whole time I was reading it I felt so completely like oh my god so yeah this one definitely will fly through kind of on that same note i think my copies are downstairs because my boyfriend was going to borrow it but mouse by art spiegelman is a fantastic graphic novel series it is a reimagining of the holocaust and it reimagines the jewish people as mice and then the nazis are cats and it is just like so mind-blowing. It's been banned a bunch of times and you can see why. Like, I'm sure Handmaid's Tale has also been banned a bunch of times, but it's definitely a book that, like, it's intense, but I think it's one that you will be able to read really quickly and it will have a lasting impact on you. Another route that you can go is a short story collection. So for quite a few like worlds, especially in YA, there are short story collections that kind of pair with that world in that fantasy. So I personally am a huge fan of these. I really love them and I find that I always read them super quickly and it just adds a little bit extra something. Like it's not like I'm trying to understand a new world because I'm already familiar with it. So I have a few here. So I have The Language of Thorns by Lee Bardugo, but there's also The Live of Lives of Saints by Lee Bardugo. So she has a couple from the Grishaverse, and then we have Tales of the, or sorry, Tales from the Hinterland by Melissa Albert, which is set in the world of the Hazelwood. It's actually, I mean, it's set in that world, but it's actually the book that like is the whole Hazelwood story, so that's cool. And then with a very similar cover, we have Tales of the Peculiar by Ransom Riggs. There's actually a new Ransom Riggs ones out, um, but I haven't read that one yet. This one though, I really love. So now just getting to the rest of the books. Those are like the obvious, they're pretty quick um, reads, but the rest of these are just kind of normal books that I found were super quick for me. So first of all, we have Before the Coffee Gets Cold by Toshikazu Kawaguchi. This went like TikTok crazy and has been super popular ever since. And this one I think is kind of obvious that it'd be pretty quick because it is so small compared to a normal book, but it still was like just such a sweet and heartwarming read that I wanted to know what was happening. I had a lot of questions about how things were working and I wanted to just keep on reading it. So I sat down and I read this one in one sitting and there's actually a sequel which I haven't read yet but I will probably read quite soon. It's definitely one where you're like transported with it. Next up is actually kind of more of an author recommendation and that is Trisha Levenseller. So here I have Blade of Secrets but she also has Shadows Between Us and Daughter of the Pirate King and all of her books I have just completely devoured. I have read them so quickly because there's just something about the way that she writes that the books just fly by. Like I can't stop reading them and they don't feel like I'm reading. I don't know what it is, but they are just compulsively readable. And another author that's actually really, really readable and her books read so quickly is Colleen Hoover, the infamous TikTok queen. <laughs> so her books are also super quick reads. But Trisha Levenseller, if you're looking for a fantastical story, she is is such a great 
like quick escape from reality. Dear Martin by Nick Stone is another book that is a super quick read. It's quite short, so to be expected, but another one that is going to stick with you like long after you have read it. This book is dealing with the justice system in the States and it deals with a black main character who is wrongfully arrested and it also like intertwines the teachings of Martin Luther King Jr. So it's really, really intelligent and such a powerful read. Another way that you can go, like I feel like there's a few ways that books are really quick for me. Some of them, they're like an escape from reality. So I just get transported away, but some of them are just so haunting and I want to know what's happening. So I keep on reading and I have so many questions, but others are just sweet and that's romances. So romances are always generally super quick reads for me. I actually will get kind of frustrated if I don't read them quickly because it's just such like a, I don't want to say my, I'm not saying mindless in a negative way. I just mean it just like is such a relaxing and pleasant experience that I'm able to fly through those pages. So Josh and Hazel's Guide to Not Dating by Christina Lauren, one of my favorites. And this is one that I read so quickly because I found the relationship was just adorable, so cute, and I could not with it. You really need to kind of find your niche, what you are liking for tropes for romances, and then I think you will find a plethora of really quick reads. Next is Tiny Pretty Things by Danielle Clayton and Sona Chiray Potra. This is one where I had so many questions and was like, what is going to happen? And that's why I kept reading it. It is kind of like a mystery thriller-ish sort of story set in a ballet boarding school. So you're following all these ballerinas, like their relationships, there's a lot of kind of weird and mysterious things that are happening. So much drama, this tangled web of everything, but like it's really addictive. Kind of another graphic novel here, but we have A Monster Calls by Patrick Ness. This is the illustrated version, but I believe it also exists as like a non-illustrated version. This one is a fairly quick read and one that is going to 100% break your heart. It's very sad. It is about a main character whose mother has cancer and is obviously like struggling with that. So really emotional, but also super speedy. I forgot about another key way that you can read really quick novels, and that is novels in verse. There are lots out there. Oh my god, how could I forget Elizabeth Acevedo, her books, like such quick reads. But the one that I did grab off of my shelves, definitely look for Elizabeth Acevedo because hers are fantastic and just so quick. But The Black Flamingo by Dean Ada. I loved this book. You follow such a long period of time, but it's all in verse, so it absolutely flies by, and you're following this main character, and you just feel like you're, like, going along his life with him, and, like, taking him by the hand, and, like, as he's figuring out who he is, where he belongs in the world, where he fits in, so heartwarming. I love this book so much. Speaking of audiobooks, Daisy Jones and the Six by Taylor Jenkins Reid. My personal favorite way of consuming this story is via audiobook. The audiobook is fantastic, but I think either way it would be a really quick read because it's actually told in like an interview format, which you're either going to love or you're going to hate it. And I personally really loved it. And especially the audiobook. I've listened to it like multiple times in a row because it just totally like blew me away. I had some such a blast reading this one and yeah it's one that I think about often so definitely one that I flew through because the audiobook is really quick. So kind of another author recommendation is Justin A. Reynolds so we have early departures and then I can't remember opposite of always was his debut novel but both of those novels I read super quickly because once again one where I was like what is happening because he writes like contemporaries with a twist so in the first one it's like he's trying to save his girlfriend from dying essentially and then this one his best friend has died but has been like brought back to life but only for a limited period of time so it's just, they're always really high stakes situations that keep me on the edge of my seat, which is rare for a contemporary, but it totally works and they're really good. Next, I think this one might be like a me thing because I read this book one morning way quicker than I was expecting. I thought it was going to take me quite a while, but My Year of Rest and Relaxation by Otessa Moshfe, I read so quickly and I think it's because I just became so like engrossed in this character and how awful she was and I was like what is happening so I just kept on reading it it's about a girl who is trying to sleep for an entire year so she is taking like a plethora of drugs to try and achieve this she is not a great person definitely like an unreliable and not likable main character narrator but 
it just totally like I was I was so confused so I just I hadn't read anything like this before so I guess that kept me reading and made me read it so quickly. Another romance on here, I could include so many, but I decided to just include the two, but we have The Layover by Lacey Walden. This is one of the recent romances that I have read super quickly, and this one is an enemies to lovers, which I know is probably the most popular trope out there, but it's not my favorite, but this one I did really love. I thought it was a very well done um, enemies to lovers story and definitely one that will completely transport you because it is set in Bali and it's following a flight attendant who she is like starting her new life. She's finally settling down because that's what her fiance wants and she's going on this last trip like her last time being a flight attendant where she has this layover in Bali and is trying to enjoy that but of course there's this flight attendant that she doesn't really like that ends up on the same flight and yeah, it's just really fun. And the final book here is The Strange and Beautiful Sorrows of Ava Lavender by Leslie Walton. This is a very different story, and like I said, I think those ones where I'm like, what? This is so weird. They really keep me reading, so they make it so I read this really quickly, and it's just such a beautiful story. It can be kind of difficult to read at times, but it's about a girl who was born with wings and you're following like at first her lineage, seeing kind of how she came to be, but you're always kind of questioning things. So that definitely keeps you reading. Okay, so those are all of the really quick reads that I wanted to share with you guys today. I hope that it might help you out, whatever you're trying to read quickly for, or if you just kind of want something that isn't going to take too much time. Like there's nothing wrong with taking your time with books and like being slow. That's totally fine. Don't feel bad about it. But also if you're wanting to read a little bit faster and read something that's going to make it feel like you're reading more because you're like finishing books sooner. I don't know what I'm saying, but basically if you read slow, it's fine. If you read fast, it's fine. It's whatever. But <laughs> thank you guys so much for watching today's video. I hope you enjoyed and I will see you in another new video soon. Bye.